onto the sky. Now, I'm going to show you two different techniques with the sky. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, outline my sky. I've just grabbed a bigger brush for speed. So because I'm half it, I'm going to just do a sort of middle line here. All right, and I'm going to do what you, again, you might do with your sky as you might, or a big space that you wanted to fill in, is again, you might think about outlining the whole thing so that you can quickly fill in the middle. And it, it makes a lot of sense that you might think that. Right, so there we go. Big brush just to to try and hope we're still in the camera here. Just check. Yep, still okay in the camera. So going to normally have a bit of paper under here so that I don't mark the board. I'll just put that on top of it, and you can see that I can take it right to the edge there. Um, and you'll also find that if your paper's too thin and you go right to the edge, that it will buckle. Right, I'm going to show you how we tape it down in the next set. Okay, so there we go, that has been outlined. And now I'm going to start filling in the middle. Okay, you can see what I'm doing here. And taking it to the edges. Because this paper's quite a good quality, as I said already, it's not, it's already still a little bit wet here and it's actually blending quite nicely. So I'm just going to leave that for a wee minute so that you can see how that actually joins um, when that paint has dried. Because yours, if you're using a cheaper paper, that paint will definitely definitely have dried first before you get to the next part and you'll not get it on quite as smooth as that. Also if you're using a smaller brush it won't work. There you go, try and... So you might find something strange will happen in a minute. Might get some cauliflowers because I'm putting the weight onto the drier paper where it's dried off a bit around the edges. Right, doesn't look too bad at the moment. Let's see how it looks when it dries. Okay, so the other side, and I'm going to leave a tiny wee space so that you can see. Um, let's see if I can get a clean page, there we go, so it's not distracting. Right, so I'm going to start at this smaller side, okay, and I want my blue stuff to be handy, so I'm going to get my blue, get plenty of it, and carefully pick out round my edge. I'm not going to go quite up to the the edge because it has a little bit less buckling if I do that, and I'm going to same as I did when I was filling in parts of the rainbow. I'm going to pull the paint with me. I'm not going to outline it. I just keep going. Now this is where it's really important if you're doing a big space to use the right size of brush to make sure you've got enough paint mixed up because if you don't have enough paint mixed up you'll run out of paint and then you'll have it drying off before you finish. Okay so now I can quickly just leave that wee space there so that the two don't bleed into each other so you see that this side's going to go nice and flat in comparison to that side which is going to have a flat bit in the middle but it's going to have an edge. Okay, there we go. I say it's always more difficult when you have a big space. Now I'm aware that rainbows don't have full solid blue skies but this is just purely for demo purposes. Right, I'm just going to zoom in so you can see what we've got here and a bit closer. 
Okay, hopefully you can see that okay. Alright, catch you later.